Right, welcome back, everybody. So Jeremy Maggs has been a journalist and a television and radio presenter for over 30 years. His wide work spectrum ranges from reporting on major world political events to entertainment and a short stint in PR. Maggs has interviewed very well-known people from, you know, Trevor Noah to... How? Rian Kreivachen as well. To an honest interview with Richard Quest on his scandal and an agonizing Spike Lee interview that almost left him in tears. In his book, My Final Answer, Mags also talks openly about the difficult times of his last couple of years as a newsroom editor-in-chief under his leadership. You'll remember in March this year, the father of two girls and a husband to his former newsroom rival decided to step down. Jeremy Maggs joins us virtually this morning and hopefully tell us about his next chapter. Jeremy, what a pleasure to see you. Welcome. Le Leanne, what a pleasure to see you as well. I sincerely hope the internet connection is holding and uh, I am absolutely freezing. I wish I was sitting under those television arc lights <laughs> well nobody really believes that these these lights can can actually fry you and everyone asks it's minus six outside and you're wearing a light blouse well we have lights blazing on us so that's <laughs> thank you for putting it out there jeremy i mean i you know i have my my personal journey with you and you know i look at you and i know that you were the one that gave me my opportunity to actually get up and read news on air and that was a major major moment for me and you know this is quite a it's quite a moment to be talking to you, the man who gave me a chance. So it really is a pleasure to be chatting to you. <laughs> well, Leanne, can I let your audience into a secret? It wasn't the news where we first had our, uh, our, our first connection. If I remember correctly, you started out on the so-called traffic desk, didn't mm -hmm. you? I did. I did. Uh, with the intention of mm. getting to news. And then, of course, you gave me that opportunity to go and read the news. But mm -hmm. the traffic desk is where I started. I In did. fact, I think mm. Sakina started there, too. It seems like the traffic desk is the place to start. <laughs> it's, not, it's crazy. It really is. But listen, enough about that, because you have had a most unbelievable career. And I mean, this book is, is just, it's riddled with humor that, you know, we shouldn't be laughing at events that you speak about, but you put so much humor in it. We, we see a very different side of news journalism. I mean, finally writing this book, what, what, what inspired you? All right. Okay. So as we, as we thought, this, this internet connection is not holding up. I don't want to go any further because I think it's only fair that we just sort out this internet connection. And believe me, we've been trying to have this interview. Uh, Sakina, you remember last week we had this yes. scheduled, I think it was, we were meant to be having it last week. And then all of a sudden everything just happened. And that was unfortunate with all of the, um, the protests that were spreading around the country. So we, we had to push it through to this week. Let's hope we got you back. So uh, Jeremy, how's that connection? Can you hear us now? I think I'm back with you, Leanne. Yeah. And again, apologies if it's from on, on my side. Sometimes in broadcasting, we are let down by technology, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, a lot of the time. So mm. let's get back to, to the question. What, what is it? I mean, this is, this is obviously a very long time in the making. So talk to us about this journey of, of, of finally penning your own book. Well, Leanne, I'm going to thunder on in the expectation that uh, the link holds. Um, I have been covering the advertising and marketing industry for most of my career. And I had an idea during lockdown last year because uh, perhaps we were all confined to home a little more than, uh, than, uh, than we should have been. Um, I thought, well, let me write a book on uh, publishers Pam but then they said great idea Jeremy but uh, maybe it would be better if you expanded the brief and wrote a little bit about uh, what has obviously been a very interesting rich and exciting career in the media and the result as you say is my final answer it's uh, a meander through my life in the media I try not to take myself too seriously and I hope that uh, the book is peppered with some amusing anecdotes yeah it, it really is because it is there's there's some fabulous laugh out loud moments they really are and I'm and I'm and I'm cl I'm, I'm glad that your your co-host actually wrote the intro to it because so, your former co-host I should say Iman Repetti because I know that some of the stories that you uh, divulge from what happened behind the scenes has to do with her and those just got me really laughing but <laughs> 
<laughs> it seems that the two of you had an unbelievable partnership and on, on screen, great chemistry on screen. It's a difficult well, thing to find. Leanne, it is absolutely a difficult thing to find. And uh, as you say, um, Iman and I are, are very close and dear friends. And I uh, always introduced her as my television wife, I learned very early on in my career that the secret uh, is to give as much light as you can to your co-host in television in the expectation that you will be reflected in that light coming back to you. The other thing you've got to learn when you're anchoring with someone is you've got to learn the other person's cadences, um, how they draw breath, and you've got to have confidence in that person that whatever you say, they will pick it up. And Iman and I managed to find that groove very, very quickly. Yeah, we you, were lucky. You probably won't remember because, you know, my, uh, one of my first television stints co-hosting was alongside you, believe it or not. And this was at Business Day Television. And that was on one of our first nights, the advice that you gave me. You said, the more you give, the more you get. And it's something that I've lived by because it is. It, it, it is so true. And I think that's in, in every part of life is, is don't, don't try and steal the shine from other people because if you shine the light on them, you'll both shine together. So it, it works. It does work. It really does. And it's a good piece of information. It, it does work, and uh, Leanne, at uh, 8.47 in the morning, you're getting very philosophical, but I will certainly subscribe to that life lesson, and I hope that uh, people can take that little television moment or that lesson and take it into their, into their, into their broader lives. It, you know, the, the, again, the secret of, of, of being in the media is always uh, listen more than you talk. Mm. Um, I've always said about broadcasters, and I put myself at the top of the list, we have two things. We have very big egos, and we love the sound of our own voices. But sometimes the secret is to be quiet a little bit, reflect and listen to what the other person is saying. It's good advice. And, and that's, that brings me to a, a difficult part for, I mean, you, you, you speak about it in your book, but it's a difficult part in your career because it, it may not have ended in the way you wanted it to end because, you know, it, it came under a lot of controversy and towards the end of your time at ENCA, there was a lot happening. There really was, um, you know, from the appointment to Canthan Pile to eventually stepping down from your position as editor-in-chief because you just could not handle the stress mm. and it was having a bad time on your health what happened what happened in those final years so you know leanne with with, with the caveat uh, that there are certain confidentialities um, which i will which i will subscribe to but the reality was and i make it very clear in the book that um as the editor-in-chief of an organization uh you know the buck stops with you 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 make decisions and uh in this business you make decisions uh, uh every single minute of the day i made a bad decision uh, in in an appointment that I made and uh, it created an atmosphere in a newsroom that I was not proud of. Yeah. And I took a calculated decision at that point for the good of the newsroom uh, and for the good of myself and for the good of my f another year uh, on air. And I'd also got to the point to do other things. Yeah, yeah. Y y it's such a difficult connection we've got um, going. I just reached the age where I'm entitled to two vaccinations, which I've had, by the way. And... Um, <laughs> Well done. Can, can I pause you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm hating this because this connection is so bad. Um, I, I, I want to actually just, can, can we take a very, very quick break? I'm going to ask my director and we can try and get this onto, onto a stronger platform because we're just losing so much of this. And it, it's, yeah, we, we need to hear from Jeremy. We really do. So uh, we're going to try and get uh, uh, Jeremy on a line, on a, on a hybrid line, i.e. a telephone line, like the old fashioned telephone line. Let's quickly, quickly take a break. We'll be back with you.